G'day there, podcaster. Welcome to Ma. Where's the Quadil? Uh, really uh, fun episode today. I think. Uh, I think yesterday was in the, in the beers. I think we call it a bit of a Monday show. You know, yeah, just didn't, which, didn't really get there for me. And usually Mondays we hit the ground running, but yeah, yesterday was real Monday. We items. slopped just, on the ground yesterday. Yeah. But uh, can I also just quickly say that I love um, in the Ben Lemonville Alpha Squad the secret Facebook page. I love that schlop is mm-hmm. in the vernacular now yeah, of the schlop. listeners. I love that if it's a sloppy episode, if there's a mistake, um, it gets referenced to as slop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this I would say like a little bit of schlop in this, but um, yeah, lot, lots of fun little moments. Yeah, and also, yeah. also there is a, um, a guest episode with Tom Gleason. Definitely check that out because he's a, he's always a pleasure. One of our favourite people to interview. Ben and Bell, I've got a bit of a guilty conscience this morning. I, I went to Amy Park to watch Adelaide United play Melbourne. City in the A League. Oh yeah, um, pretty pretty light on numbers. I reckon there's about five thousand people say. there, <laughs> and I was sitting in the Adelaide United bit because that's you know where we're from, right? And just um, by yourself. Well, no, that, that was probably about fifteen other guys there, <laughs> and uh, but it was like the you know the Red Army. They were really like you know they were doing all their chants, and so I was, I was sitting there watching the game, and they're like, "If you city, if you Yarra, we hate Melbourne, we hate Melbourne." And there's all these ads at the moment like new to Melbourne, <laughs> like Ben Lehman, <laughs> and I literally I was like, "Ooh!" I was just my I was like a turtle, like slowly putting my my head into my shirt. <laughs> we hate you because you're Victorian, and I'm like, but I don't because I love this city as well. I'm on the radio here now. Ben Liam. It's not too late for a cheeky summer break. Whatif.com has awesome deals for top Aussie destinations. Plus, all kinds of places to stay for your getaway. Jump on the What If app to book your hotels, motels, holiday rentals and more. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Ah, oh, so embarrassing. Ben and Bell, I'm new to Melbourne, trying to make some friends over here. And I think I fall into that trap of uh, you think you're friends with someone just because you followed them on Instagram. It's like a oh, real... Yes. What trap is that? I've never fell for that trap. <laughs> it's, it's a trap, Ben. <laughs> you think you know someone's life back to front and you're like, yeah, they're a friend well, it's because like, you yeah. see their story every day. I think it's called CWS, Celebrity Worship Syndrome. Like when you love a TV show and you're like, oh, I love that guy. I've been watching that guy for years. So mm. then you think there's... It, yeah. Even though they've never heard of you sort of thing. So... Um, you know, I'm the I'm a, I'm a I'm the social one. I'm the social butterfly. Always try to to make new friends. Ben's a bit more of an introvert. Bell, yeah, I mean, you're right. You're from Melbourne, so yeah. you've, just, you've got tons of mates. Yeah, here. I'm a good middle ground between you guys. Yeah. Um. So I I've been putting in a bit of groundwork. Um. <laughs> you know, just reaching oh. out to certain heads. Well, just random people on Instagram. Well, not, like complete. Well, I would say the person I reached out to. We've had a bit of an Instagram relationship. Okay. Um, what, just saying, hey, want well, to catch just, up? Well, you know, just, well, we've sort of knocked back messages in the past. Yep. Mm. Um, so the, the person I reached out to is Daniel Gorringe. He <laughs> Love he, Daniel Gorringe. He's a lovely guy. He was on Big Brother. Yeah. He um, he was an AFL player for a while. For the Gold Coast Suns, was it? Yeah, he, I think he, he finished at the Suns, yep. And um, he's also, so he's from Adelaide. Right, yeah. so he's he he played footy at the Teacher Gully Footy Club, which is like my local area. Yeah. Never had anything to do with the guy though, but um, I I thought he was just hilarious on Instagram like years ago. Like I've, I can scroll up here. Here's the message, Shane. Seventh uh, of May, twenty twenty, was the first time I messaged him. I said, "Huge news, Gorringe. Congrats," because he got the Big Brother thing. Right, and he said, "Thanks, great man. Big fan of yours. Much love." Ooh, nice. So and so that's, okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. you know that's some time ago. So we were sort of you knock back, replying to each other's stories here and there. I've never mm. met him, never even spoken to him. And so I thought, hell, you know, I know he lives in Melbourne. I live in Melbourne. No, guys, guys, come on. I mean, it's a perfectly normal thing. It's like you had a pen pal and now you've finally gone to their country and you've gone, hey, you want to catch up? (laughs) Oh, no, we're not real friends. I don't want to (laughs) actually. So, Bill, so I've I've, I've sent a message. I said, like, hey, man, um, want to grab a beer sometime. Mm. Pretty. It's not like I asked him out to the movies or something. It's just a beer, pretty casual. I mean, I'm sure Daniel Gorringe likes a beer every now and then. And um, he was like, yeah, man, 100%, let's do that. Like, a beer to welcome you to Melbourne. Cool. Knocking it around. He's sort of talking <laughs> about his, you know, his, um, we're on here. You know, he's talking about, oh, the corner hotel's good. Yeah. Um, you know, he said, uh, Prince Alfred's nice. I said, yeah, Prince Alfred sounds good. Yeah. Knocking it around, yada, yada. <laughs> um, and then he's like, sweet, like, let's let's lock in Thursday. And then I was like, cool, Thursday it is. Yeah. And he said, actually, I'll just confirm on my calendar. I'll message you tomorrow to lock it in. A week went by. Um, this was this was last Thursday we were talking about. So so and I I've obviously 
I, I spent two nights at the pub just there with uh, two <laughs> beers waiting. They're both going warm. That's so funny because I now you've mentioned that. I remember last week you were excited because now I think about it. On Thursday, you had this little wry smile because we were finishing work and you said, I'm getting a beer with <laughs> yeah, Daniel yeah, well, well, okay. I thought I was going to make a friend. <laughs> but obviously I didn't. I fell into the trap. <laughs> and now I feel very awkward about it because the trail's just gone cold. Well, you know what we need to do? We need to call him. No. We need to call him. No. We need to lock in a day. That's so cringe. I know, I know you've got him on. I know, I know, I know <laughs> he's on the line. Can I, yeah, can I just say, this is awkward now because it's like at least I was just sort of telling you guys in confidence, but now it feels like <laughs> now it feels like I was like picked on at school, and then dads come to the schoolyard and it's like, right, you're going to be nice to my kid from now on. You, you know what need I mean? Like, to face these challenges head on. So he joins us now, Daniel Gorringe. Good morning, sir. A good morning, good morning. Thanks for having me on, everyone. Uh, be here. Anytime. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, um, Daniel, can you explain from your side of things uh, what happened last Thursday when you stood Liam up? Yeah, everything was going really well. You know, We had a great online relationship. Yeah. Messages going back and forth. It was easy. It was natural. Yeah. Um, and I guess things got real and <laughs> yeah. he okay. came on a bit heavy. I want okay. to be honest. He came okay. on really heavy. Okay. I thought we were, I thought we were there. Um, I just thought... Put it, put it this way. When I was living in Adelaide over the last few years whilst we were talking, if I was like, I'll fly over for a beer, <laughs> that would be weird. That would be weird. But I was just thinking, Daniel, because we're like sort of like, you know... I live here now. We sort of. Well, you told me where you live, um, so I and our areas are close. Our areas are close, and I mm. thought, I think we're ready for the, the next step. I was, I, I was obviously wrong. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you, you came on really heavy, but also, also got yeah. It's a Melbourne thing to do this. Like you guys are new, yeah. and it, we were always doing this to each other. Maybe here, and then like one that show up. So welcome to Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> got ya, got ya, got ya. So this totally is got ya. Um, no, but go on, go on, do it, Liam. Do it, right. Come on, mate. Do do it? Come on, mate. You got to do this. You got to do it. Daniel, I was wondering maybe um, this weekend if you're free, maybe you could come get a beer with me. Mm, look, let me get back to you. Um, <laughs> my schedule's flat out as well. Okay. I want to. I 100% yeah. want to, man. But yeah, the thing is, like, so many things are coming up. Okay. Um, yep. So, mm-hmm. look, I'll say yes, but let's just see how things go. Okay. okay. Yep. He's a busy man. Hey, Daniel, um, just been here. Um, did you want to get a beer on Friday? I am free for you, yes. Awesome, oh, man. Jesus. Sweet. Oh, Come on now. Thank you so much, great man. I'll see you on Friday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see you Friday, mate. Can't wait. Uh, I would be so flat. I mean, if a, if a selfie came through, would you go, yeah. I'm like, I know. Ben doesn't even like talking to people. I would die. It's 6.10. Hallelujah. It's 6.10. Good morning to you, Casey. How you doing? Good morning. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Now, look, as it stands, Casey, you're the only caller for the 610 quiz this morning. So, if nobody else calls up and you get it wrong, you have to just keep guessing until you get it right, okay? Oh, gosh, okay. All right. First question. Uh, Thousands of more GA tickets for the GP will drop this week. Can you spell Grand Prix? G-R-A-N-D-P-I-X? Ooh, Ooh, that's grand oh, picks. No. But as we said, you're our it, only caller, so you will get a second say, chance. It doesn't have a D, does it? it, it, no, it, it, does, it does have a D. Oh, it does have a D. Yeah, you, you, got, you got the first part right. P-R-I-X? She's done it. Nice. Very good. Very nice. good. All right, second question. Oprah Winfrey has celebrated her 69th birthday with celebs such as Kim Kardashian and Jennifer Lopez. Which famous male actor jumped up on Oprah's couch during her talk show? Uh, Tom Cruise? It was. I love Katie Holmes. Oh, okay. I love Katie Holmes. What a kook that guy is. Happy birthday, Justin Timberlake, 42 today. Which boy band was he a part of? Oh, gosh. Um, Backstreet Boys? Oh, oh it wasn't no. the Backstreet Boys. And oh, it's not your lucky day, Casey, because now Lauren from Back Smash is called. She can swoop in and steal it from you. Which boy band was JT a part of? Do you remember? Anything. It was. Uh, it's the last day of January today. How many days are in February? Uh, 29. No! Oh, I spoke about it yesterday. <laughs> yes, oh if you were doing your listening yesterday, uh, Ben also discovered there was, well, I won't say how many days because that is the answer, <laughs> but also, you know, in life you may have learned that at some point. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at the calendar or, or something. Nicole uh, from Clayton, do you know how many days are in Feb? Uh, 
Uh, 28. Yeah, she's done it. Last one here. Rumour has it the Spice Girls may reunite to perform at the King's Coronation. Can you finish these lyrics? Nice one, Nicole. You're off to the open air cinema with a double pass. You also get to pick the next song we play. So you want to hear this one? Yeah, it does sound good. So that's the first option, and this is option two, Nicole. Makes you want to uh, move I'll your body, the... doesn't it? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go the second one. Oh, hey. All right. All right, well, it's gym class heroes. That's not been said on 100 for <laughs> probably two decades. And the fray carries over to, like, the fourth day now. Yeah. I think, but we'll get there. I think we've got to ask ourselves when we put in the bullet in the fray. I, no. I think the fray's a great song. Yeah, it's I, a good song. I think any song, if it gets to the two-week mark, we officially kill it. But, yeah, I know, my, I know, I know, I know. 30 seconds of Mars went for a whole week last week, Bill. That's fine. <laughs> What a time to tune in because we're opening up the forbidden folder. Everyone, turn your keys. Yeah, this is where we keep the ideas the boss has said no to in the past because it's probably not appropriate for breakfast radio. Um, this is an interesting one. It's a, it's an area that um, yeah, I think a lot of people would find fascinating. Possibly it's, confusing. It's an area that we have been kind of talking about uh, off air, off the show, mm-hmm. saying, wow, imagine if one day we could speak to one of those oh, yeah. people. And we're going to be speaking to one very shortly. 13 24 are you a furry? So I believe I believe a furry is uh, a person yep. who dresses up as an animal. Yep. And I, th- I think it's a sex thing. I d- see, it's interesting. So I've done some Googling on furries because I have heard the term thrown around quite a bit. Um, obviously, this is a generalisation, but that's at its core, they're people that just dress up as animals. But I think it does go further into that, into the sexual realm, potentially. Um, it also can... So the interest can range from drawing furry art, so like drawing animals, dressing up in the fursuit, and then meeting other furries. Okay, so you is... could, it's a kind of like a, you, you could draw one and it's kind of like a gateway and then you yep. know, all of a sudden you get some of the gear, you know, yep. you're dressing up, you're meeting some other people in the community, then one thing might lead to another. That's the thing. I think um, you kind of touched on it there, Ben, before, but I think people have taken this whole idea of furries and really exaggerated it and said, oh, well, it's just a sex thing and it's just people that dress well, up in is, it. You don't know enough about it, though, exactly. do you? Exactly, but I think to me it's what I've seen online and stuff is... Is it's like a community like your live action role playing. Um, so they're a community and they probably maybe just celebrate, hey, this is our mythical world. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. But of course, yeah, when you see it on paper, you go, oh, it's, a, it's a sex thing. Mm. O- obviously, we've got a lot of questions either way in the Forbidden Folder this morning. 13, 20, 14, if you are a furry, if you're part of that community. Angela joins us now. Angela, I believe, are you, I mean, we call you a furry? Uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So how long have you been a fairy for, Angela? Uh, probably about four years now. Okay, okay. so it's so pretty pretty fresh. And, and when and when you're wearing the, the suit, are you, like, pretending to be a cat the whole time? Or are you just sort of walk yeah. around, like, ordering a coffee, yeah. like, hey, how you doing? No, you're you yeah. pretending to be a cat. Yeah. So no, you, definitely, you definitely do take on the, you know, well, the persona of the, um, you know, of the animal, the character that you do. There's actually, uh, there's a furry convention that happens once a year. A furry um, convention? Yeah. <laughs> Furcon. 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 I've not heard of Furcon. Okay. What do you do at that? Uh, well, it's, it's pretty much the same as, like, Comic-Con and Super Dive. They, yeah. like, they have displays and things and, you know, a dance party on one of the nights. Um, and it's very big on, like, you know, taking lots of photos. So they do photo mm. shoots. And, and that sort of thing. The Comic Con and stuff—they have people from like Doctor Who and television shows like that. I'm, 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 done, I'm racking my brain trying to think of the Furcon speakers. Like, yeah. it's the guy who voiced Clifford. Um, <laughs> Rye joins us now in Collingwood. You're also a furry, Rye. Good morning, Ben Liam and Bell. Hey! Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Good morning. Yes, I am also a furry as well. I go by Scribble the Dancing Dragon. Scribble How are you? Scribble the Dancing Dragon. Very good. good. Uh, so do you prefer we call you Scribble? Uh, if Scribbles works for y'all, I'm happy with that. All right. Okay, so Scribble, cool. uh, how long have you been doing Scribble for? 
I have been playing Scribbles for almost 20 years now. That's a, a long time. And what, so obviously, you know, I get people are pretending to be like cats, you know, licking their paws and, you know, spraying and stuff. But oh, like, gosh, of course. But for, I mean, look, if, if people aren't looking at porn, I don't know what they're doing with their lives. Oh, but, but, <laughs> oh no, I said paws. I, I didn't say anything. Paws. About, I didn't say anything oh, about my paws. goodness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paws are great. No, oh, I said yeah, lick, paws licking, great. licking paws. Love paws. Yeah, I can see how that licking sounded paws. like looking like porn. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, paws was, are great. I love paws. I was going to ask, uh, what do you do as a dragon? Is that like running around sort of chasing chasing people? Oh, or? my gosh. Well, Scribbles as a character, I've just kind of made a, a dragon who can't fly, and so you'll see my feet flying on the dance floor instead. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. And now, also, Scribbles, uh, I mean, you brought it up, not me, so I'll just go there now, but uh, you mentioned the, the pawn. Uh, is it a sexual thing for you as well? Sometimes. I find it's one of those things where it's like, I've been involved in the community for as long as I have. Mm. It's obviously going to be a part of it. I mean, gosh, after 20 years, you freaking hope so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a heck of a dry spell. <laughs> Jeez Louise. So, I mean, uh, what's the other, I mean, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but what's the other, like, in terms of um, other furries that you've been intimate with, what's been the best experience? Like, what was the other furry? As a dragon, what's the, yeah, what's the other animal? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, I think uh, my favorite partner in terms of, like, role play. Yeah. Ooh, are you kidding? That's kissing and telling. I'm not going to do that oh, on the live air. Are you crazy? On. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Maybe a little, like, <laughs> they were a cute little, they were a cute puppy, you know? I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with, certain, with certain white marks. But anyway, anyway, anyway. No, 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 no. I won't go into details because we don't kiss and tell, and that's rude. Yeah, they didn't, yeah, they, they didn't consent fair. to that on the radio. Are you kidding me? Scribbles. Oh, my God. Final question. Uh, these <laughs> costumes look incredible most of the time. How much yeah. does one set you back? Oh, my gosh. It can range so real widely. Like, some mm. people get, like, partial costumes, you know, because they're a lot more fun, a lot more versatile, and those things can cost, you know, maybe a couple hundred dollars. Mm. You get some expensive ones that can cost as much as a brand-new computer. It varies widely, mm. you know. Accessibility is really important to the community, um, as is consent, as I mentioned. It's one of those things where it's just... We want as many people to have as good a time with the fandom and the fun and the silliness of it all as they possibly can, you know? Our last caller, the Cheshire Cat, mentioned that they're going to FurCon. Are you going there this year? Uh, yes, that will be Furdu coming up uh, very soon up in the Sunshine Coast. And yes, I go every year. I... I'm a judge at the dance competition, oh, good. and I teach a dance class up there. So yeah, I love the idea of someone getting on a Jetstar flight to the sunny coast and then just sitting next to like all, <laughs> right? all oh these people God. in animal like, suits on, and on purpose, even like yeah. wow. <laughs> well, uh, Rai, thank you so much uh, for coming on this morning for the Forbidden Folder and giving Ben, myself, and Belle a little bit more information uh, about furries. I, I'm just the. the I, I don't want to ask because I feel like it falls back into that kissing and telling thing, but I, I'd imagine it'd get a bit awkward um, going to, like, the dry cleaner with your uh, dragon <laughs> suit after a, okay. after a night with the puppy. Okay. okay. Very exciting. Ben announced last week that him and his beautiful wife, Sam, are having a baby. And even more exciting news, <laughs> I, Liam, am the godfather. So I've been, you know, reading a lot of, you know, parental sort of guidance books, listening to podcasts and stuff, just getting ready for the, for the baby. Um, last week, you were almost just going to reveal the gender, Ben, and I, I said, no, 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 um, we, we we want a gender reveal, right, Bill? Like, they're, they're, they're I fine. Mean, I, yeah, but the thing is, is that Ben already knew the gender. Yeah. So usually it's a gender reveal for the parents and well, they get really excited, whereas for us, I, I could see what you were doing, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, but... Yeah, just- so because I already knew the gender, what it ended up becoming was it was a gender reveal for you. You, Liam. Which was nice that you played along <laughs> because, you know, it's it's the first godchild I've had, so this is also like a big moment for me. Yep. Uh, and and I was thinking, all right, what is what is Ben like? He loves footy. So we go to the, the home of footy, the MCG. Mm. We pull up there yesterday. Um, you know, why not get an AFL great involved? A big truck like Campbell Brown. <sighs> mm. Um, and then and then we get him to sledge one of us. Uh, so Ben had a shirt saying it's a girl, I had a shirt saying it's a boy, whoever he tackled was going to be the gender of my godchild. Yep. Um, I, I, so, so I left that with you and Campbell Brown. Um, I, I must admit, I, I, I had suspicions when you put the boy shirt on me. I'm like, if I was a betting man, I think it 
think it might be a boy. Yeah, it was also a nice touch, um, just before we play you the audio, it was a nice touch, I thought, that we got Belle an official <laughs> AFL yeah. umpire's outfit. She was umpiring the whole thing, just in case things got a little heated between me and Campbell. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, she was all dressed up. You also had one of those um, confetti Look, cannons yes, as well. Yes, yes. Um, so that, that goes off just after the hit. Um, yes, we can confirm it's a boy. I was the one who got tackled. <laughs> it's a boy! It's a boy! <laughs> What's happened? Like a bomb went off. You can see the video now on the Ben, Liam and Bell Instagram. Uh, all I'll say is, Bell, I feel like that confetti cannon was a little too close to my face. I think, I think that, that impact yeah. hurt almost more than the Campbell Brown one. Well, I want to say something now, Ben, and I'm, I just want to preface it by saying don't hate me, but I'm a little disappointed. That mean? I'm having a boy. A healthy, yeah. a healthy baby. A blessing. Yeah, yeah, but I just wanted to see you have a girl as a bit of a challenge for you. Because I think a We're, boy for you, Ben, personally, because you love your footy and you love your gaming and your Xbox well, and whatever. Girls can love all that stuff. Like, yeah, but I feel like it'll just be a mini Ben and you'll just go, all right, you so know, you, let's, and you'll just try and get him into all the stuff that you like. Whereas I think if you had a girl, I'd love to see you take care of a little baby girl. So you're upset that I'm having a boy because you think it won't be a challenge? <laughs> yeah. like, when, when, oh, when the okay. baby's, you know, screaming at 2am and Ben's going to be up in an hour to do his show, he'll be like, ooh, games and footy. And the baby will be like, yeah. You're sick, mate. All right, I'll just, I'll just have a sleep then. Oh, I'm sorry that my unborn son is yeah. a disappointment. And my, to you, and my godson. Yeah, oh, my Bill. Yeah. A lot of shows kicked off last night. You had Survivor. You had Maths. You had Australian Idol's big return. It was so exciting. The judges are, you know, Kyle Sanderlands, Amy Shark, Megan Trainer, and what we've been. What lacking, about the other, the judge, other guy? Oh, Harry Connick Jr. Or yeah, I mean, don't forget Harry. Yeah. He's he's got a seat at the table. He still does. <laughs> Deserves to have his, have his name mentioned on Nova. What we have been lacking in these TV shows, though, like in The Voice, you don't see all the crap auditions. And mm. that's what we love and we've missed about Australian Idol. If you didn't watch it last night, we have put together a few of the highlights for you. Something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you have the time of your life. I'm falling to pieces, yeah. I'm falling to pieces. Boo! <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> The thing is, if I had her voice, though, even yeah. that one just there, I think I'm pretty good. Yeah, well, it's not bad. I, I know you did go for it. Bell was actually the third one you heard there. So <laughs> don't, don't feel too bad about it, Bell. The radio thing's going well. Liam and Bell, uh, you know I like to think that I'm pretty good at most things. Mm-hmm. Um, besides spelling and finishing school, because I like to both of those. Yeah, I, I would say your skills don't lie in the academic yep. area. I think you're a, like a smart person, but yep. I don't think you're, you're book smart mm. necessarily. I would also say the social... Um you know, certainly, side of things. certainly lacking social skills, yeah. Bell. That's a great. That's a great point. Ben yep. doesn't uh, really like interacting with other humans. Yep. But I would say in the you know if we were going back to caveman times. Yep. He'd be sweet, yep. you know, because like you, you know, most of the time you're just by yourself playing around with sticks and stuff. Well, I have found another large chink in my armor. Um, besides all of those things everyone just mentioned, um, there's some pretty big chinks. In there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, not necessarily the best type of armor you'd want to be running out into battle with. That's for sure. Um, so I've started going to my local gym, which is the YMCA for the gym facilities. Yes. But the, they also the have a oh. lap pool, and I've realised that I can't swim. Yeah. I was waiting for this. So I can swim in a sense that I can get in a pool and not yeah. drown. Yeah. I can yeah. do that you, just you fine. Can, you I can, can tread water. Power. I can yeah. tread water just fine. I can't swim. You know. Yeah. You know what? I I don't know if you're doing the same thing, but if I if I if I had to be honest with myself, Ben, I would say I'm in a pretty similar boat in the sense that if I'm if I'm doing freestyle. Yep. My head isn't going in the water and out the water. My what? head is my head is like uh, out of the water like a dog the whole yep. time. That it is has just doggy paddle. Then. It has given me a new lease on watching the Olympics when they swim because it is so impressive that they can they can do the freestyle so they're paddling but their head's in the water 
and then they're timing it so the head comes out and then they <gasps> and they breathe yeah, and I, then back in for a few I seconds. Can't do that. What you learn when you do swimming lessons then, at five years old. No, nah, it is so, so hard. I Liam, you just mentioned it. So when I swim freestyle, my head is out of I'm the water. I'm doing the same thing. The whole I've time. always done that. <laughs> I watched so them. Well, I was like, what well, are you doing? When you think about it, it's like a turtle. Like you can constantly get air. Like <laughs> I like to see you because if I if I put my head in the water, not only can I not breathe, yes. I can't swim in a straight line. Like I what, can't. So you might I, cut, I you might cut the, people off. Yeah. You might go into lines. You might hit your head at the end. Yep. What? Okay, so you told me, yeah, what, a few weeks ago, you said, oh, I'm thinking yeah. of signing up to this gym and yep. they've got a lap pool and I think I might start doing laps. Yep. Now, when you told me that, a part of me wanted to go, oh, really? Because mm. when I look at you, Ben, I don't see, yeah, I don't I don't see you doing swimming lessons your whole childhood. Yep. I don't see you, yeah, competing or anything. Yep. And I thought, I wonder how he'll go. What's he going to wear? Is it going to be board shorts or is it going to be speedos? <laughs> Do you own a pair of goggles? Are you going to have a cap on? Uh, These so are the questions. I don't own a cap. I don't own goggles. Well, there's yeah. the first problem. Uh, I'm, I'm going to invest in some, though. And then the problem with swimming is you get water in your ears. So I was thinking about getting plugs in my ears. <laughs> ben comes <laughs> in with his plugs. I'm ready. <laughs> I, I also, I you know, traditionally in the Olympics, you don't see people swimming in flapper Billabong. Yeah. Um, bill- what are yeah. you wearing? I got like a pair of like um, kind of like above knee. It's like cotton on shorts. Cotton on shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to drag you as well. Well, that's I no, I, I completely, like, I, I think you wouldn't be alone there, Ben. Even even the, it, it stresses me like the dismount. Like I, I you know, when people just whoosh, like yep. go in like a seal or something yep. and they torpedo out. Whenever like, I do that, when I remember when I was a kid and I had goggles, if I yeah. dove in, my goggles whoosh, come off your yeah. face. Yeah, yeah, so you didn't have them in the right place in your head. Oh, oh right. yeah. Oh, yeah. It also... <laughs> <laughs> probably, you know, the fact he belly flopped in there probably didn't help as well. So, look, that is the chink in my armour. Yeah. Um, 13, 24, 10. I'd love to know, what can't you do? Are you a fully grown adult and you have an absolute flaw in your armour? I mean, I'm giving you all this crap for not being able to swim, but I still, to this day, I'm 28 and I can't blow up balloons with my mouth. You don't have enough really? lung capacity. I don't. I just don't. I can't do it. Well, everyone has little things. I mean, for me... Analog clocks don't like them. Never have, never have. What do you mean? I'm a digital guy. I'm a digital. If you like, if someone's like, "What's the time?" I'm looking at it. I'm like, Ugh. Angelica joins us now in Taylor's Lake. Good morning, Angelica. What can't you do? Good morning, guys. I can't whistle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, that is. It's a harder skill than you would think. I can't do the whistle that uh, dads do, where they put the two fingers in their mouth. And go, yeah, yeah, I can't that, do that. That big one. Can you, go, Liam? Can you go in and out though? <laughs> Is I that, can only do in. You can only go in. Yeah. That, that was in and out there. Yeah, yeah. wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Angelica, I know, I mean, if you can't do it and it's a phone line, it's going to sound terrible, but could you give it a, a try attempt. this morning? Yeah, could you Could you try your best? I'll try. Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> You're just, You're just blowing, like You're just blowing <laughs> wind out of your mouth there. <laughs> Sorry, Angelica. Stuart joins us now. Good morning, Stuart. What can't you do, mate? I can't put on my back for the life of me. You can't what? I can't float on the back. Not on my back. <laughs> I can't yeah, float. It's kind of can't tricky, float. though. It's kind of tricky. No, it's not, because all you have to do is nothing. Are you... You, yeah, just breathe in a bit it's... to get some air. Yeah. 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 You, you can't relax, Stuart. Yeah, it's... <laughs> no, I, I sink straight to the bottom. I mean, Stuart, are you a very thin man? I am. Um, just to put it on top of it, I am. A, I used to be a lifeguard as well. So. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, that feels like you should sort of be, you know, know your way around the pool. I get what you mean, though. It's true. I, I think I can kind of float, but my legs sort of droop down a little bit. Yeah, no, gotta, no, one's, no one's stiff. legs also float. Yeah, no, you've got to kind of hold, like, yeah. stiff, make sure your legs are stiff yeah. and they'll stay. Oh, I was expecting my legs to also float. <laughs> uh, David joins us now in Essendon. Good morning, David. What can't you do? I can't use a knife and fork. Properly. What? Do you, what? Do you, huh. you hold it weird or something? I hold it back to front. Yeah, opposite hand. Oh, so you put your so if you're right-handed, you've actually got your knife in your left hand. Though. Yeah. Correct. That's kind of cool. You're ambidextrous with cutlery. How do, you, how do you go with chopsticks, David? Um, not bad. <laughs> well, okay. that, maybe that, maybe yeah. I should use them. Well, that's it. Well, no one would notice. It's just you know one hand or the other. Unless you're using both hands for the chopsticks, in which case you're definitely doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, Siobhan from Hertzbridge, what can't you do? I can't say the word co- coidial. <laughs> coidial. Are you trying to say cordial? <laughs> yes. Oh. Cordial is in the drink. <laughs> yes, like you mix it with water. Okay. <laughs> so coidial. Let's break yes. it up, Siobhan. So we've got core. Core. 
Dial. No. no. Deal. Okay. And I know it's wrong. Core deal. Quadi- no. No. Oh, that's, that's not real. Has someone had my quadial? <laughs> hey! Ma! The meatloaf! Where's my quadial? What's trending? Trending all over the internet. Twitter. Instagram. Welcome to Facebook. <laughs> The biggest news story of today, Dustin Martin's car was stolen and used in a crime spree across Melbourne. It happened last week. His black Range Rover was apparently stolen from a petrol station in St Kilda after he'd lent it to a mate who then just left the keys in the in the car while he went to pay There's for the petrol. There's definitely a correlation between cars full of Class A drugs ramming police officers and people lending their cars to mates. Like, how <laughs> often has your friend ever asked you, can I borrow your car? I'd be like, but Ben, you have two cars at home. Why? Why would you need mine? So not only was the car borrowed from a friend, it was then stolen from a petrol station. Yeah, because he... The, so the Dusty's mate who'd borrowed it just yeah. thought, it's not my car, I'll just leave the keys in it while I go and pay. Yeah. Who does that? Yeah, I don't know. And get ready, because the Spice Girls, including Posh, may be reuniting to perform at the King's Coronation in May. If you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. That feels like it was upon the King's request, doesn't mm-hmm. it? They're like, Your Majesty, we have assembled the choir of Westminster Abbey for your coronation. Bollocks! <laughs> Bring me sporty, scary baby ginger and pot. But my liege, it's what I want, what I really, really want. A zig a zig. Ah. Ah, good morning to be Pamela Anderson. Her husband of 12 days died, left at 10 million. Stoked. Yeah, bad morning though to be Jackie Chan's son um, because he is getting absolutely nothing in Jackie's will. Jackie, by the way, he, not he's dead. He's not dead, guys. He's, I not know, dead. he's not done a movie for a while. He's still kicking. Totally fine. Well, Jackie's, Jackie Chan's saying his son, JC, will have to work for it. He said, you've got to you've got to work for it. You can't just inherit this and then fly yep. first class. 13, 24, 10. Give us a buzz, Melbourne. Let us know. Surprise in the will. Did you you get one, good one, bad one. Uh, we've got prizes up for grabs. You can also remain anonymous if you'd like. Kaz in Mulgrave, was this a good surprise or a bad surprise? Well, it was a very good surprise. Oh, okay. All right, hit 15, us. 15 years ago when my grandmother passed away, my younger sister and I inherited the house in Perth. Yeah, but what we good. didn't know is she had $1.3 million in the bank. Oh, Nana. No wow. way. Wow. So yeah, Nana, sell, all right. Did you, sell the, <laughs> did you sell the house? Oh, man. Yes, we did. We sold it for $1.6 million, and we ended up with three quarters of a million dollars each. Well, let's go. Sorry, so you, had the, so you had the house that you inherited, and you sold that, but then you also had the cash in the bank account. Of the, of the $1.3 million, okay. 800000 went to... Her siblings in per- yep. in Poland, and my sister and I and a few others shared in half a million dollars. Oh. So, so, Kaz, what what was this old Polish nana living in Perth doing for that amount of money? Yeah, real estate agent. Right, 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 and doing drugs on the side. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nana died with her bum bag still on. That is a good one, Kaz. Thank you very much. Uh, Lauren joins us now in Canterbury. Good morning, Lauren. Uh, good surprise or bad surprise in the wheel? Hi guys, a good surprise. We, um, my nan got put into an aged care facility and she was there for probably about four or five years. Mm. We would visit her every day. Um, she then passed away and yeah. in that time of being there, we obviously became close with a few of the residents. Yeah. They saw us every day. Yeah. Um, so one in particular was in the room across from my nan. Yeah. And he had no family. Um, and we just, yeah, just developed a good relationship with him. And two mm-hmm. years after my nan passing, we still went in every single day to see him. Aww. And he got his, I think he had two nieces or something that lived in another country that weren't overly nice to him, but that's who he left his money to. And he um, went to the lawyers and got his will changed, and I ended up with $750,000. No! Yeah, did it, Lauren. You worked for that yeah. will, Lauren. You that's did it. I thought, I thought there's actually a good um, job opportunity there, just making relationships what, with old just people. Just go to nursing homes. <laughs> look, look my, my, my dear old Gramps Lionel, he's uh, he's also in a home at the moment, Lauren, and he, you know he's not. Um, he's worked hard his, all his life. He's not leaving a lot in the will and the, the the lady across the road from him the rel she she thinks i'm her son and every time i go in to visit him she hugs me and farts so that's <laughs> i don't think i'm getting 750 <laughs> grand Ooh, from know. her <laughs> that's yeah, unreal yeah. 
surprise. Oh, man. That's great, Lauren. Well, I, I was going to say congratulations. No, yeah, it like, is. No, absolutely. Congratulations on that one. Uh, look, I, I think we're going to take one more call because I'm loving these so much. Angela joins us now. You had a surprise in the will? Yes. Um, well, not personally me, but I had a summer that was left a uh, treasure hunt in the will. And I had to um, hunt around in the garden. Yeah. Um, in the end, they ended up getting about $300,000 cash, which they brought in to me, and it absolutely stunk like dirt. So hence why I asked the question. <gasps> so, so they were put on a treasure hunt somewhere under a rose bush, somewhere dug up in some other part of the garden. It was, uh, how could I say, a... Uh, Funny but silly and sad story at the same time. We were having a good laugh with the, the wow. family of the deceased. So they, in their will, they left a treasure hunt, like a treasure map, and then they found three hundred. Wow, you can do. I guess you can do. I love that, like leaving your family like a treasure hunt or something, and then they open the box and it's like I had nothing left. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> it took us four years to finish the hunt. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.